stay a while and listen. Welcome to the Agony of Positivity podcast. I am Quarantine. Lost. What is it? 14? I am Saul. Is it quarantine? Oh, I thought you were giving it like a number. Yeah, we are still yes. following, uh, you know, don't be around people that you don't need to be. Um, also, I'm still coughing a ton. Probably going to die. But, you know. Well, technically, we're all going to die. Yeah. So. Well, time will get us before <laughs> sooner or later. So, yes. but yeah, so we got uh, a big, we're going to say it's a big show, but it doesn't feel that way because it is the day of WrestleMania. Night That's one true. is tonight. Now, good luck if you want to know who's on night one. Um, as of this moment, I have no idea. So, but we'll be talking about that. So, sure. Uh, how has your week been? So, uh, how has my week been? Well, I don't have a job. Uh, um, <laughs> so, all I've been doing is going to like grocery stores, right, and getting food, uh, which you know you can only do so much of, right? <laughs> see me. Uh, let's see. I went to Smoothie King a bunch of times. Got me some right. smoothies. Now, are you able to go uh, in there, or do they have a drive-through, or? Uh, yeah. So the Smoothie King that I typically go to uh, has a front entrance and a back entrance. Mm -hmm. I always go to the back entrance. And they have chairs blocking you all the way into the store, basically. Yeah. So only one person can actually fit into the back entrance. <laughs> it says stay six feet apart. Right. Which basically means don't come in if you're if you want to come in from the outside. You wait till the other person leaves. Right now and they're, they're not like meeting uh, you at the door with their hand wrapped in a plastic bag or anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> We'll be talking about a, a business that apparently is, well, I believe was suggesting that uh, yes. later on. I, I've yeah. seen a lot of people, and I guess uh, the White House made a made it a suggestion yesterday of wearing um, masks. Uh, like face masks. I've yeah. seen a lot of people wear masks. And I've seen a lot of people wear bandanas around their face. So. Right. The, the, the little I think I sent you a picture yesterday talking about it. The yeah. little kid in me that wanted to be like a little bandit cowboy guy is really excited. So now I get to like now it's appropriate for me to wear a bandana around my neck and like look like a bandit going into stores is great. Right. Well, and uh, old Hangman Page. I mean, he can just literally walk around in full gear and be set. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes, exactly. still still weird seeing a grown man in underwear and cowboy boots. Uh, you know. <laughs> But the bandana people will, they'll be ex a much more accepting of that currently. Yes. So. Or, or maybe just be like, yeah, well, it's it's something different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, just, just another day at Walmart. <laughs> right. Yeah, we just blend right in. Yeah, our stores, uh, so Ohio, I don't know if up by your area yet they're doing it. Uh, they're going to limit the amount of people in the store. So for like every thousand square feet, there's going to be a certain amount of people that they allow in. I know Costco was already doing this because I tried yeah. to go there once and there was people out front with a clipboard and like the line counter, uh, you know, like from amusement park. I was like, I can't bring myself to wait that long, that long in line to go to the grocery. But I mean, if you are truly being cautious that is how you would want to do it. So, I mean, I understand it, but so instead of this, and this is why this is so dumb to me. So instead of, instead of like all being a bunch of people inside the store, we were actually kind of moving around because the store is somewhat big. People are bunched up outside. Uh, yeah, they have, get in. <laughs> no, you're six feet apart outside too. They have like the, the hall monitors who are enforcing the distance. So, yeah. so, I mean, well, and yeah. also, again, much like the world of wrestling, the stores are just like, I don't know what we're doing. Oh, my goodness. None of, it, I'm sure the poor person with the clipboard and the, the ticker to count people yeah. in the building, 
no chance that they ever thought in their life that that is what their job would be. Well, it's funny because yesterday uh, we uh, went over to my wife's family's house. To uh, it was like a birthday party or something. Uh, it was like a small birthday party, so there was only like six people there or whatever <laughs> type thing. But anyway, my wife's my my niece by marriage. They were talking about her graduation or graduation at the school she goes to, and they're all trying to figure out what they're going to do with it. Is it just a wash? Are they going to do an online thing? I, I made a suggestion. I think it's a great idea. I think more schools should do it. So that's why I'm mentioning it right now. <laughs> I said they should go to a parking lot and the person, whoever has the, uh, the announce, whoever does the announcing, they get a big old boom, <laughs> boom, uh, speakers outside, get a microphone inside their car <laughs> and, they, and they read the graduation out. And they have all the graduates in parking spaces. And when he calls the person's name out, they get in the car and they drive up <laughs> right next to the guy. He hands the diploma out. Maybe the guy who <laughs> just graduated, he drives around in a little circle with his car or whatever. Does a donut. They have the victory lap <laughs> zone. And then you just that, leave. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. So I'm thinking that would be the greatest graduation thing ever. That's actually... N- I would hate to have to organize it, but I mean, that's not sure. a horrible idea, truthfully. Yeah. No. I mean, compared I to, you get nothing, basically. Well, um, I mean, think about it. That that will be that would be a graduation that will always, like, man, remember uh, when your brother uh, graduated and his, through his car, we, we rented out that parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> and then we did some, some wicked donuts. <laughs> Oh no! Right, so, yeah. <laughs> like you said, everything's trying to adapt, trying yeah. to find ways to work out. Oh, yeah, like my work. So I'm one of six people that are still go to the office because I don't have uh, the space I'm using to record. This is where my wife works, so she works it from home. So I don't really have yeah. room to set anything up. Uh, so I'm still work from the office, but there's only six of us. But our building yeah. got closed for two days this week. Uh, okay. Which is fine, because that's extra days off, and I've still not fully recovered. Uh, so extra rest, I'm not going to complain. But that was sure. like pretty much my excitement, because otherwise it was come home every day and just go to bed and be like, man, I wish I would get to feel better. <laughs> Which I had sure. been to the doctor before I returned to work, just in case anyone's yeah. listening to this, like, oh my God, what does this guy do? Like, went to the doctor, they checked me out, there's no... Con- from what they have said, there is no concerns of contagion or me having anything. I'm just stuck yeah. with a cough and kind of feeling crappy after having the flu. So I will trust them that, you know, that's fine. If not, well, what can I do at that point? Um, sure. Lame. So, all right. So the Steve, the, the, the Steve Carino. <laughs> yeah, he's just still running amok. Uh, let's see here. So, all right. Are you ready? to get mm-hmm. into the world of pro wrestling. That's right. All right. I am ready. Oh, I don't know what the hell's going on here, folks. It looks like he's just wearing blue pants. This is a revolution. So, for our little wrestling bumper, where we have my favorite part of the, it's like he's just wearing blue knee pads, uh, mm-hmm. the part where Tony Schiavone and Cody were talking about Britt Baker, and they were like, why do you have to take a shoe off to eat a chicken sandwich? That's going to make it into our bumper at some point. I don't know if you <laughs> caught that part. Um, I did. Or how excited she was to be hitting Cody with a shoe. <laughs> Pretty sure heel Britt Baker is one of the best things going. Sure. <laughs> kind of surprised. Um, so yeah, so this week we got a Monday Night Raw. Again, no audience. We got Dynamite, no audience. We got... Smackdown, no audience. We're going to have WrestleMania. I assume no audience, but who knows? They might pipe in crowd noise since it's all been recorded. So, how much of... You know, you know what? I, I really hope they pipe in crowd noise. <laughs> Would you be shocked, truthfully? Would you be like, I can't believe they did that? Because I don't think anyone can actually say that who is aware of yes. WWE. Um, they, they just... They just splice in like old footage from old WrestleManias of crowds like ah. 
That would be fun. Or they now if they just use like the same crowd shot over and over, where it was yes. like kind of funny, that'd be okay. But then if you're having what's like you can't do that during Edge and Randy Orton, like <laughs> sure. I am. Well, we'll get to we'll get to that. Um, I don't yeah. want to touch on. Did you watch anything from Raw? No. I have no. about zero idea what happened because I was out of it. Um, I read the results. I don't remember. Truthfully, I mean, I watched Dynamite and I barely remember what happened. Um, yeah, I'm the same way. And like, I, mean, I was hyped up because I had found out like right before it started that I didn't have to go to work the next day. So sure. I had a little bit of a adrenaline rush there. Um, like, like, like a little kid. Oh, it was you, awesome. It was like a snow day. School got canceled. Yes. Well, yeah, because like, uh, <laughs> checked my email. I was like, what's this? Oh, my goodness. A message from corporate uh, sword forging company. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I was like, oh, that's amazing. And I was like, I hope it wasn't someone who sits by me that was contaminated. <laughs> uh, all right. But so big things from this is uh, Cody's still doing commentary with Tony. Um, mm -hmm. He seemed to be a little more calm this week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would say I felt he improved compared to last week. Yeah. Now, granted, he didn't say daddy eats first. So immediately better. Um, but so some of the things uh, that were notable, uh, the Trent and Kenny Omega match, I thought was really good. I uh, felt like they just beat the crap out of each other for nobody. So I thought that was good. Um, we got... I'm just kind of skipping a bunch of different things here, but we got uh, Lance Archer had his uh, debut. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of that? Because he <laughs> having a debut match for a guy that big against Marco Stunt is yeah. hilarious to me. <laughs> yeah, Mar uh, Murder Hawk there, old Lance Archer. If he has a neat look about him. Uh, his uh, <laughs> one day we're gonna get a fashion or catwalk segment of some kind going but his uh long pants i thought looked awesome like yeah. just he looked cool uh mm -hmm. i i enjoy that like i think you do like people's gear sticks out to me maybe more than it should but yes. it's such a cool part of the presentation it's like a superhero basically like yeah i mean there's like different versions of batman where some of the suits you look at them and you're like oh that's garbage and you're like, oh, no. that's awesome. He's going to kick some sure. butt while he's wearing that. Um, let me think. So, yeah, we got the the brilliance later on in the show of uh, Britt Baker and her shoe and her chicken sandwich and all that. Uh, speaking of gear, we had Sheeta with a uh, second time wearing her new gear. Yeah. Which I forgot to mention, or I, that was the show we missed, where she had the new gear and actually even put up something on Twitter about the making of it. Mm -hmm. which made me laugh because I was like wait she's wearing new gear and then like looking through I was like oh like I'm not the only one <laughs> that is uh, interested in this where they show a making of the gear that's pretty crazy yeah oh uh, uh, yeah her, her, her new gear looks pretty good yeah I like it a little bit better the other gear looked like it was broken or I guess battle damaged maybe would be the what she's going for with it because I know she does some cosplay stuff but yeah, she does like some kind of weird. Uh, I don't even know if it's cosplay. It's like she like reenacts. Yeah, like I was uh, like sword I was, fighting or I, I don't know. Right, I was looking through her Twitter a little bit, and then some other stuff. Just seeing, cause I don't know a lot about her at all, but um, she's definitely I one of the the high points. Like I like watching her stuff. Um, mm. Which speaking of that, she fought uh, Anna J, who put two Y's on J for some reason, uh, who was new. Uh, yeah. I wasn't blown away by the match, but you know, whatever. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's like a reenactment or just full on actressing. I don't know if that's like their equivalent to civil war reenactments. Yeah. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't really know. Um, so we got, uh, Anyway, so Lance Archer literally murders Marco's stunt, I'm pretty sure. How do you think that conversation goes before the match backstage? 
Is Marco like, hey, I know it's your big debut. Uh, just kill me. That's fine. Just throw me as far as you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that how that conversation would go. To be honest with you. Because <laughs> I mean, it's a super simple match to make him look amazing. Yeah. Um, and bark at like I don't know, like the the choke slam over the railing at the end scared me because I don't know if you've ever seen the clip of, I believe it was La Resistance uh, slamming Spike Dudley out of the ring onto a table where they they fail and just Spike mm-hmm. Dudley's the back of his head just wrecks into this table and it was it was horrifying I had like these brief visions of something like that happening on the railing Yeah. fortunately it did not uh, there was a lot of <laughs> In ECW, I saw Spike Dudley go through a lot of uh, things that he should not have to be. A lot of dangerous spots, yes. The uh, yeah, this was like, this was bad. Like, look for it at some point, and you'll be like, oh my god. And then, yeah, it was. Just, I don't. I could be wrong. It might not have been a lot of resistance, but it was. It was ugly. Um. Yeah, here. the only thing of this dynamite that I really enjoyed mm-hmm. was I a little bit of the um, uh, the Dark Order stuff. Yeah, but the one thing that I really enjoyed was Chris Jericho versus Vanguard. Yes, and I think that's the best thing going. Uh, right well, now. when he was like, "Release the hounds." <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are those all Jericho's dogs, or did yeah, he like so. rent people's dog? Like. But, uh, on his Instagram page, he has he's there's different dogs that he's videotaped. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I assume they're his dogs unless, unless he's renting dogs for his Instagram photo. You know. Oh, so. no, but either way, like yeah, no, you're right. That was fantastic. Um, Vanguard one is more over than some of the wrestlers, which is bizarre yes. to think about. <laughs> yes. So. I'm waiting uh, for Jericho to approach Boston Dynamic to get their robot. Okay. Like, the one that can, like, run up the stairs and do all the stuff. Like, yeah. he needs to forget about Vanguard 1, and he needs to be recruiting that guy. That thing could actually wear a t-shirt. So. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the, uh... Yeah, anything... <laughs> yeah, anything else about... about this? Yeah. Right. Uh, like you said, they introduced the uh, the title. Yeah, the that is actually because uh, that was on the the road to or on the, what yeah whatever they want to call it. Yeah, it's going to be the TNT title. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people seem to have a ton of problem with that name. Uh, what do you think? Do you have any issues with the name? I well, see, I don't know. Like uh, I forget who said it, but one of the podcasts that I listened to was like, uh, so I guess you better hope that TNT stays your uh, sponsor there for a while because uh you just change the name. You... <laughs> well, well the thing is that, though like with I think that's what they're getting at. Why don't you just call it the TV title, you know? Right. Well, or cuz it's AEW Dynamite and then TNT yeah. goes with Dynamite. So, now if the logo on the belt is a gigantic yeah, like TNT the network logo, like yeah. I need to see what the belt looks like uh before I decide, but for the most part, I don't care about the name of it. Uh, yeah. I mean, if they change networks, change the name of the belt. Um, sure. It's still the same title, so whatever. Sure. Or, I mean, what? You retire that title, and then you just make a new one? So, yeah. we'll, <laughs> we'll see. But, I mean, yeah, I would have preferred just, like, the... I mean, if you do the Dynamite title, maybe if you change shows, you change the name of it. I don't know. But again, as long as it's not just the TNT company logo, and that's all it is on the <laughs> yeah. belt, I think it'll it'll end up being okay. Um, yeah. But I'm just glad that they're going to do a secondary title. So they've revealed both sides of the uh, the bracket for it. Yeah. Do you have someone that you think is going to win? Uh, Lance Archer. You think? I can't decide between. I feel like it's him or Cody. 
Yeah, I, but, I, I think Cody's going to continue his his not being able to because I think that's a better storyline not being able to capture the gold. Yeah, like not one thing. big one. Now this one he probably yeah. will not be uh, saying that he'll never challenge for again. Although it would be funny if that's his gimmick. <laughs> it's like yeah. everything they have he can never challenge for. Yeah, he just restricts himself from winning any titles. <laughs> Like, if someone has beaten me, I can never challenge them to a match again. They have to challenge like, me. It's like, Cody, what do you keep doing? To, like, Arn's like, what are you doing that for? <laughs> Be like, that is it gives a me really motivation, bad. Arn. It gives me motivation. <laughs> like, yeah, but you failed. Yeah, I Or, like, he does uh, that understand. with this, and then he makes the Cody Rhodes title that no one's allowed to challenge for. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, so he'll just... be like Taz. Make his own title up. <laughs> yeah, the FTW. I mean, they yeah. got Taz. They could bring back the FTW title. It's true. Um, so I thought it was weird that in the tournament bracket that mm -hmm. they have uh, Colt Cabana go up against Lance Archer right, I mean, right off the bat. Because Colt Cabana actually has kind of a uh, winning streak in uh, AEW. I mean, it's not a lot, but... right. Uh, my thought would be that Colt's actually a pretty big guy. Um, for Dynamite's crowd, I would say that they're more likely to be familiar with Colt. Uh, mm -hmm. So, again, I'm kind of on your... I cannot imagine Lance Archer not making it to the finals, at least. Yeah. So I imagine they want him to beat somebody. And Colt Cabana well. is somebody enough to beat. Now, that obviously kind of hurts Colt a little bit, but we'll see. Well, and because, I mean, I already kind of see how it's going to unfold, maybe. Um, I think it's going to be Lance Archer advancing. And it's going to be Dustin Rose advancing. Right. Ad advancing. And I think Lance Archer is going to hurt <laughs> hurt Dustin again. Because that seems to be... <laughs> That's what he does. Seems to, <laughs> it seems to be the, the thing he, he does, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be it. Now, I could see them doing something where I'm expecting probably Cody against Darby to happen. Yeah. And I think Darby is going to win. Okay, then, yeah. Okay, I can see um, that. Now, this is more like fantasy side, but I could actually see that just because you give Darby against Archer. Mm -hmm. Archer wins, but you continue making Darby look very impressive yeah but it's more likely that you're going to get cody and archer like they kind of already built it up and then maybe yeah. somebody screws over cody or something during it or he just can't beat archer but it's hard to hard to think that you're putting archer who's brand new into this thing without mm -hmm. him at least hitting the finals yeah so um uh, trying to think if there's anything else really yeah, because you mentioned, like, the Vanguard 1 thing. Um, yeah, the the end match where you got uh, Sammy and Sean stole a victory over Cody and Darby. Darby punches yeah. Cody in the face or forearms him or whatever. Um, like, that was an okay match. Uh, but again, it's hard. You know, wrestling's hard with no crowd. Uh, yeah. Brody Lee screaming at the dude over uh, yawning for it showing weakness. Yeah. The uh, now, do you think they're full on ripping on Mr. McMahon, or do you think it's just crazy people in power, and it just so happens that Vince is a good example of some of like the more outlandish things? Uh, <laughs> he might be taking shots, mm -hmm. but that character he's playing, I mean, that's a that's kind of a classic, you know sleazy corporation cult guy you know right and it's he just like, happens you know, that... to have used two things that are uh well-known vince mcmahon story to hardcore wrestling fans yeah i mean it's not like it's a new character or, i mean i've seen it before in movies and stuff so, yeah like that yeah. archetype yeah yeah um no i agree i don't really have too much of a problem with it um because it's telling how he is overall really mm -hmm. is what it feels like so Again, like, there's people, I'm sure, who are, like, anti-AEW who just hate it. Yeah. Uh, but they're probably going to hate everything. So. <laughs> so. Like, I mean, like, like, myself, I'm definitely closer. I'm not anti-WWE, but I'm definitely closer to that side just because I'm. Well. 
done. And what I'm getting ready to say here, I, I don't <laughs> know if you've seen it or not. I'm going to say WWE, WWE probably won the week for me. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the Drew McIntyre training? No, in, in the I Scottish haven't watched Highlands? it. You know why I haven't watched it? What? I don't understand why he's training in wrestling tights. <laughs> that is just super care. weird to me. <laughs> well, here. You should stop the pot because I don't know if he can actually show the video. Stop the podcast right now. Watch this video because it's it, it, it's two minutes long. Uh, I'll send you the link. I'll send you the link here. Hold on. I have it. The problem is because I'm recording with OBS, I mm -hmm. don't want to have to combine two videos together. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So I'm going to pass on it for the moment. Now, there's probably a way to pause it, but I don't know how that works. Gotcha. So, okay. Someone's um, listening like, oh my god, it's so easy. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, I've used this thing like three times and never has this come up yet. But Sure. Yeah, because he's like um, doing like squats and crazy <laughs> stuff with kegs, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he's he's legitimately up in the, it looks like the Scottish Highlands. <laughs> now, do they have him practicing the Claymore, like destroying things? Uh, no, it's just him, like, basically, it's like a rocky, uh, where Montage. he fights the Russian thing. Where, yeah, I mean, he's just, like, carrying these kegs around. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I'll watch it after this, but yeah, it, I just think it's weird that he was doing it in a t-shirt and trunks. And yeah, I like, so, I... <laughs> one scene, he's lifted at this big, uh, ball stone thing. And yeah, he's the struggling. Stones. Yeah, and then uh, he's doing a uh, tug of war with a bunch of guys, and uh, there's like looks like there's like eight of them, and there's like this one of him, and they're across a river. Do they uh, all, and then he's pulling. Does he pull them into the river and then dive in to rescue them all? No. <laughs> uh, he's pulling a tractor. <laughs> he's he's sweet. He's swimming across some kind of lake. Uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. It, it, then he's like, he's carrying these, these, uh, these barrels around. Yeah. <laughs> it's just anyone that likes uh, Drew McIntyre just wants something this ridiculous. I think WWE should do more stuff like this. And yeah. I, I actually, I think he should have actually wrestled. Uh, <laughs> Brock Lesnar on, on top of the uh, on the on the Scottish Highlands. Uh, I should have put I a, saw put someone a who there. said that they really wish for WrestleMania this year, since it's already just crazy, to yeah. have actually done kind of like where you're going to get like uh, Cena against the Fiend in a Firefly Funhouse match, whatever that is, to actually yeah. make it like Street Fighter style, where you're on yeah. someone's stage. So like, sure, McIntyre gets like you know a ring set up in that setting. Um, yeah, you know, kind of like what they're doing. They got they got Undertaker and Styles in the Boneyard, uh, but just like have them in like different locations. Yeah. Now I don't know how big of a hassle that would be on this kind of short notice, um, but that would be kind of neat. So, but yeah. So yeah. Speaking of, oh, go ahead. No, I was, I was just gonna say WWE needs to embrace the ridiculousness and just focus on that. So. Well, yeah. And that's like, uh, like we were talking about this before it started. Like I tried to watch SmackDown last night because uh -huh. I don't really know who's fighting on what day of the two day WrestleMania. I wasn't a hundred percent sure on the card yet. And I started to watch it and like Ms. Morrison, New Day and Usos opened it up and it really felt like they were still behaving as if there was a crowd. And sure. Like some of it's just weird to me. And I guess you're still performing for the people at home, but due to the fact that just I'm much more critical than possibly is fair of WWE at this point, it's hard for me to get into it. And then they show the, uh, they did like a replay match of, uh, HBK against flair. It's like, uh -huh. well, that doesn't, that's not even relevant. Like that's not even the people involved in WrestleMania. You're just showing a match. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of stopped watching and I was like, well, I'll read some results and see what's going on. Uh, so as it is right now, let's see here. It is 10 o'clock in the morning. I had this pulled up just a little bit ago. Uh, they mentioned on SmackDown that Goldberg will now be going against Braun 
but like the official WWE website is still saying Roman. I'm going to refresh this and see if maybe it updated that. Uh, yeah. No, it still says that. But my issue with this is it's a two night WrestleMania. They're pushing where you can actually buy it on. Uh, what's it called? I WWE literally, my brain just went away. Like you can do like two night pay-per-view for like 30 bucks or 34, depending on what it is, but they yeah. haven't told you who's on what day. Yeah. So for comparison, <laughs> uh, now in the video, you would be able to see this. So new Japan, uh, on December 9th for 2019, cause they did WrestleMania kingdom 14, two days. So December 9th, they had put up the full card for night one of wrestle kingdom 14. The okay. date of Wrestle Kingdom 14 is January 4th and January 5th. So they gave about a month's notice, almost, as to what the night one card was going to be. So you could figure okay. out, oh yeah, this is what I want to watch. Because you know, like some of these matches, say you only really care about Edge versus Randy Orton, for some reason you're not getting the network and you're going to do like normal pay-per-view. As it is right now, you don't know if it's today or tomorrow. Sure, yeah. Like, what if you only had one day off that you could request and you're going to have to work the other? You still don't know what day you need to watch. Like, it just yeah. seems really weird to me. Also, yeah, I... <laughs> oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> oh, sorry. I did the wrong thing there. Um, I just don't understand not inter <laughs> talking about your matches. I, I don't get it. Yeah, I I am just totally baffled by it. So especially since it's all pre-taped, anyways. Right. Well, and I've read different reports. Like, there's one of the places was saying it's a fireable offense to leak information for WrestleMania. And in, in which I, case, it should you want be out of the company. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, that's your way. That'd be funny, actually, if all of a sudden, uh, man, that would yeah. be amazing if one of the the talent did that. Like if uh, <laughs> Dash or Dawson, whichever one's still there, um, yeah, that would be hilarious. But you now, like the article I was like kind of skimming over, they seem to make it like they weren't for that. But like that seems totally fair to me. Like you have this big event that you don't want people to know what the finish is, and yeah. if you're leaking that information to places, that is that seems fair to me. That that should be something you could be fired for. Sure, like. I don't know. Like it, it seems strange to me that people were saying that that was terrible. It's like that actually of the many things that are terrible, that is not one of them. But yeah, yeah. I just wanted to complain a little bit about not knowing what's on what night. Um, sure, that, that, that's here. Yeah, I'm going go to go to their homepage, and what I'm looking for. Mandy Rose is distraught because she found out she was tricked, by the way, if you didn't know that. I'm just seeing if there's anything that's telling me what night is what. And I'm not seeing anything. I am reminded of the untold story of the HBK Kurt Angle match. If you haven't watched that, that's a good watch. So, yeah. So, I have no idea what's going to happen on Saturday's WrestleMania. And we are hours away from it, basically. Yep. Dump. So. Well, you ready to uh, discuss Give Me What You Want? Yes. Hold on. I will play the intro. I'm in control here. And you're going to give me what I want. Give me what I want. You know what I want. I've been asking for it. And you're going to give me what I want. Thank you, Batista. Uh, yeah, so we had the request for the 1992 Royal Rumble. Uh, mm -hmm. Spoilers, obviously, if. Uh, you know, you don't know what happens yet. You're going to find out. So yes. stop it and watch it now if you want to. This is the one with Ric Flair. Uh, all right. So I got our Wikipedia pulled up that actually has our <laughs> our order. Now, we had yeah, mentioned last cool, week. Actually. Did you happen to take the time to watch the Legion of Doom Natural Disasters match I told you about? <laughs> I was going to, and I was like, I, no, I, I just, I just, just couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, again, for like, I was amused by it. The finish is a count out, like double count out. Very unsatisfying. 
but it is just big dude slapping meat. So, <laughs> Earthquake tries a drop kick. There's just people run, like the amount of times that they both just stand and then run into each other is amazing. So, yeah, I I found that <laughs> the one thing the one I, I didn't watch the match because I'm like this is bad was uh, Owen Hart and J- Jim Nyhart. I don't remember them looking like that. The new foundation <laughs> with, like, the blue and the checkerboard and stuff? I mean, I understand it was 1992, but yeah. I don't know. It just... Yeah, the blue, the yellow, the checkerboard. Um, yeah. yeah. I remember that, and I thought yeah. it looked cool. Sure. So, what that says about me, I, I don't know. Uh, still yeah. better than Danger Owen Hart. <laughs> that was the worst sure. outfit that he ever had. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, now when this one, so this rumble starts, did you know what happened as soon as you realized what rumble this was, or did you actually not know? I I didn't know who won it, though. That is amazing to me, in a way. Um, Now, granted, (laughs) maybe I have, I have watched a lot of wrestling in my life, so. I'm uh, not a, see, it goes back to the, I'm not a WWE guy. I just. But it's the Royal Rumble. uh, Like, see, that's what's weird to me is, like, being a WWE or uh, WCW guy is it seems weird to not watch WrestleMania or um, Royal Rumble. But at the same time, I didn't watch all the Starcades. Um, Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I definitely didn't watch and have no idea. Mm -hmm. Like, the only reason I saw it was the Flair Steamboat match. Um, that goes like it's super long, but we thought we were watching WrestleMania five, but yeah. somehow we ended watching it instead. Okay, but it was still good. Like the Flair Steamboat match was amazing. Like even as a youngster at that point in time, I was like, man, this is really good. But I really yeah. wanted to see Hulk Hogan and Macho Man fight. So gotcha. <laughs> um, let's see. But yeah, so I guess before we get kind of like going through what happened with it. Were you entertained? Like, did you think it was a good rumble? Yeah, I thought it was good. Uh, compared to uh, other ones that you have seen, how would you yes. say that it would rate? Um, I don't know. It would. It's not too high up because I do like how uh, WWE does it now with uh, actually keeping a number up to let you know what contestants coming out because it seemed like. I'm like, we're way past 30 here. <laughs> because it just seems like there's a lot of people that's coming out. But one thing, I didn't know a lot of the people coming out. Some, right. some of the people, I'm like, who in the world's that? But uh, I, I do like how WWE now put what number the person is that comes out. At, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, it didn't really bother me. I didn't even think about that. So I actually like okay. the, the pacing on this one. And that's yep. probably the bigger difference is like it was every two minutes or now I think it's like 90 seconds or yeah. a minute. Like one year they did a minute when I think they had 40 people in it. Um, but with this, um, I just like the pacing of this one a lot better. And I think that yeah, two was... minutes kind of helps out, but mm-hmm. the whole thing, like it really felt like everybody had, even when there was nothing really going on, like it just, it moved along better to me. Like it felt more natural yes. for, excuse me, how something like this would happen. Um, yeah. So you had sent me a message <laughs> about poor Ted DiBiase. Yeah. But so what you might not know was, I believe the two prior to this DiBiase had like some of the longest runs at that time in okay. the, the rumble. So I think it was one of those, you expected him to go forever, so they just eliminated him right away. Gotcha. Okay. Just kind of the the, the surprise factor. Right. Well, because there was the one year I think he bought number 30, if I remember correctly. Then he got penalized and was, like, number one and had, like, okay. a super, super good run in it. And then something else and then this one. So I might be a little bit off on that because I'm not – if I'm watching the Rumble, I can remember it. But I can't yep. reflect on it, I guess. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah. So, what do you think of young Shawn Michaels being in this one? Uh, it was weird because uh, <laughs> he wasn't the, the center 
the center point of it, basically. Yeah, he was just some dude uh, who was in there for a while. Yeah. Uh, I, I did see a lot of his overreacting that he did with uh, Hogan. So if, like you told me a couple weeks ago, oh, <laughs> about Hogan and him fighting that one time, I mean, Shawn Michaels was just overselling everything. Oh, yeah. And if they told him to act like the 90s Shawn Michaels, he was definitely acting like the, the 90s Shawn Michaels. Because oh, yeah. He was overreacting everything, so. Yeah, I mean, he was drawing as much attention as he could. But, yes. yeah, it's, uh, whenever I watch something old and Michaels is in it, and he's basically just, like, mid-card level Shawn Michaels, mm-hmm. it's so weird knowing what he's going to become. Sure. <laughs> um, so, out of, like, the first ten or so people, uh, mm-hmm. did anything, what was the biggest surprise to you out of the first ten? Uh... Let's see. I would say uh, seeing Ming or Haku. Haku, whatever you want to call him, and then and knowing the that he could kill everyone in the ring apparently from all the stories about him. <laughs> yes, the most ridiculous guy <laughs> is the Repo Man. <laughs> Repo Man was awesome. Did you were you watching at all when he was around? Uh, not really. <laughs> so you need to uh, put into your Google machine. Uh, Repo yeah. Man promos. There's one okay. where he shows up and he's, uh, I wanted to say steal, but technically he's doing his job. But he like repos like a little kid's bicycle. Like there's just all <laughs> kinds of just ridiculous stuff. Uh, and you sure. notice like the way he was walking around all sneaky. Yes. Like, he did that all the time. Like, sure. He was 100% <laughs> into that. Um, well, the. <laughs> The thing that was cracking me up, he was lurk, he was lurking in the ring, and it's like, whatever his lurking move was, it made him invisible. Like no one yeah, else can see him. Or something. It's like a rogue in uh, Warcraft. He has stealth. Yes, it, it was just funny. I'm like, okay, well, he's he, apparently when he lurks, he be, he goes stealth mode. I guess. Yeah. No, he's totally awesome. Uh, the uh, at one point, I want to say. It might have been the British Bulldog. He had like a, a hook and rope, you know, to like mm-hmm. repo stuff, but he'd just bring that to the ring with him because wrestling, I guess. <laughs> yes. uh, but he actually like hung somebody with it for a while. Okay. I feel like it was the British Bulldog, but it might have been somebody. It probably Crush. Who knows? Um, so, but anyway, yeah, the Repo Man was awesome. And probably, now, did you catch the Texas Tornado? Yep, I did. His only move is a punch. And it just yes. sends people, like, it has, like, 15 <laughs> knockback to every punch that he does. Well, at first, I thought that was the ultimate warrior. <laughs> then I was like, oh, wait, that's, that's the Texas Tornado guy. But even though the Texas yeah. Tornado only did punches, he is still, yes. a, you can tell, like, just watching, he is a better wrestler than the ultimate warrior. <laughs> just sure. the way he walks in the ring. Um, yes. All right, so we got, like, of the next, like, five people here, we had Greg Valentine, who is probably 115 at this point. We got Nikolai Volkov, uh, uh, Big Boss Man before he got in super oh, good shape. Yeah. Big Boss Man. Hercules and Piper. I don't, I don't, I don't even know who the, who the hell Hercules was. Hercules I saw Fernandez? him come out, and I'm like, I, I'm like, who who is Hercules? I, I don't. Yeah, he did. Uh, I mean, he swung a chain around a lot. Um, he was in a tag team, like stuff that wouldn't matter. Power and glory. Uh, he was like a pretty solid character, but I don't sure. know that he ever really did much in WWE that mattered. I guess. Yeah. Like yeah, those guys. I'd say like Boss Man and Piper are probably your biggest names overall. It's weird. It's weird for me because I saw a lot of I guess Piper in WCW. Mm-hmm. Piper actually being somewhat in good shape. <laughs> yeah, like, it was, it was good shape, moving down. around good. Uh, yep. You know, having sunglasses for They Live. <laughs> yeah. That movie is good. Um, I thought about rewatching it last night because it keeps popping up on my YouTube. You should. Like, That's a good movie. Yeah. The fight scene between him and Dude is, at the All time... the alleyway. Yeah, the, one of the longest fight scenes ever. Really? And the fact that he... He hits a pile driver on concrete. I, mean, I'm, I might be misremembering that, but I'm—I know there's a pile driver or something in that whole thing. But 
Yeah. Piper was awesome. Uh, so yeah, like during this whole time, uh, something that stuck out to me was the commentary. Cause you got, mm-hmm. uh, Heenan is beside himself due to Flair being in so early and Monsoon uh-huh. was just delighted that Flair was in that early because he was going to get what he deserves or, you know, he was going to be proven to be a coward or something, I guess. Yeah. Um, so like that's playing yep. out throughout the whole beginning. Where... Yeah, Monsoon was. Uh, I, I like Monsoon. Yeah, but I still think I I like Vince better. Um, I have a is. yeah. I have a special place for Vince on commentary in my heart. I don't know if it's because of the age I was, but yeah. I like him on commentary. I would love to have him do commentary nowadays, just yes. to see what happens. But yep. uh, so anyway, like. You know, people are in, people are out. Uh, yep. Nothing really matters there. So our next five people, you get Jake Roberts, Jim Duggan, IRS, Superfly, and Undertaker. So, Father Fiend, yes. <laughs> so you get a, uh, like, Jake Roberts, like, more aware of how big he is now, um, is in there. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, good Lord, he was one of my favorite wrestlers as a kid, and I just don't get it. Like, I don't know how I like him so much. Yeah. Um, I'll agree with that. <laughs> yeah, you got IRS, how? which, what can you say about IRS? I'm really shocked that Bray Wyatt is not made to be IRS Jr. or something. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm sure it's been pitched to him. Yes. Like, you know, this theme thing's not doing too good. If you wanted to be like a tax man. Yes. Or we could do, like, this Varsity Club thing. Uh, yes. <laughs> find a Steiner or two for you. Uh, yeah, so we got <laughs> Superfly uh, wearing boots, mm-hmm. not barefoot at this point in time. And then you get the best version of The Undertaker in my mind, which is black and gray Undertaker. <laughs> the Undertaker just chokes people. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that's, and he moves around uh, slowly. Yes. So... so yes. We get, uh, so Randy Savage comes out, who at this time Mm -hmm. is feuding to the death with Jake Roberts after being bit by the Cobra and everything. Yes. And things just get crazy for a while. (laughs) Because, like, he eliminates, like, Roberts hides from him, takes her from behind, like, eventually Savage eliminates him. Savage just dives over the top to keep trying to fight Roberts. Undertaker's there. Um, eventually Savage gets back into the ring and they're like, well, you can't eliminate yourself. And like, it's like just complete insanity for what, like five minutes. Yeah. Uh, which was fairly exciting at the time, I would say. Yeah. Uh, and then we follow that up with the berserker. (laughs) I thought, I thought Brody Lee, I thought that was Brody Lee at first that I was like, no, yeah, the Berserker. Somebody else. <laughs> so the big things I remember about the Berserker, other than the husk, yeah. where he would grab his wrist and do that whole thing, was when yeah. Undertaker turns face, the Berserker pile drivers Undertaker on concrete. Taker sits up, but he also tried to stab him with his sword. And Undertaker rolled out of the way. <laughs> like that's my biggest memories of the Berserker. Yeah. Let's see here. So we get uh, Virgil. Mm-hmm. We get Colonel Mustafa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some people might know him as the Iron Cheek, which I was confused. Yeah. Like, I didn't really understand at this point in time, like, renaming people quite that well. So, like, I'm around 12, 11, 12 right now. <laughs> sure. Uh, where it's like, I know that's the Iron Cheek. Why are they <laughs> calling him that? Yes. Now, granted, this is in the same time frame where. I still 100% didn't know how wrestling worked and thought that most of the match was you worked together, but you just took shoot finishers. So, yes, <laughs> which is still, that'd be an awesome way for wrestling to work. Uh, <laughs> you get uh, some Rick Martel. Yep. So strike for like, you know, him and Tito were strike force. I don't know if you ever saw them. No. Uh, so we finally get, <laughs> to Hulk Hogan comes out mm-hmm. and it's Hulk Hogan coming out 
all that yes. stuff. Um, yeah. Now, the end, so we're going from like 26 to number 30. So mm -hmm. you have, now I'm going to read these out of order for a purpose. But so you have Hulk Hogan, pretty big mm -hmm. deal. You got Sergeant Slaughter, pretty big deal. Yep. Sid Justice, Sid Vicious, Psycho Sid, whatever you want to call him, Softball Sid, yeah. uh, Warlord, who's a impressive dude. Yeah. And Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like out of yeah. that that final five people, Skinner being in there, I don't know if it's to add realism to it, or you're just gonna have someone show up at the end, or what. But man, is he out of place. Um, yeah, I had to look him up because I don't remember this guy. I was like, he did is the he Gator a Drop crocodile guy, and I was like, well, yeah, that's that's what he is. <laughs> Apparently, he he was legitimately a crocodile hunter. Sure. <laughs> so there you go that's all I can say right that's all I can say sure but, so at this point so a little bit before this um, it was interesting because Monsoon actually started complimenting Flair yeah like he had won Flair over because Flair instead of trying to hide all the time or anything was still getting up and taking it to people yeah. um, or like trying to throw some offense like he was being active so like it by the the final third of this, like he's won one over Monsoon. Heenan's actually digging more on Flair for why doesn't he just like lay there? Why is he like putting himself in danger? So yeah. I thought that was an interesting change where clearly the bad guy has slightly won over the the good guy announcer. Mm -hmm. Uh in earlier watchings of that I never really caught that. So I thought that was a good touch. Um, yeah, sure. I'm trying to think, because like, honestly, all the way up until we get to the end, like none of the the people getting tossed out, like nothing blew my mind of that. It was just yeah. like, oh yeah, someone got knocked out, or you know, it was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, until you you eventually get down to Hogan, Sid, and Flair. Yeah, and then have on my screen Hogan. here for the video version the moment uh -huh. I realized that Hulk Hogan might not be a good person yeah they uh they really, Hogan really looks bad for the finish here he, he yeah, looks like he's he's so, a sore loser yeah well cause it's the three of them so Hogan's trying to get Flair out Sid's standing there watching it and kind of shrugs his shoulder and he's like well, I'm not just gonna stand here so he dumps Hogan which yeah. is fair. I mean, it's everyone for themselves. So Hogan's incensed or whatever. And he grabs Sid's arm and starts trying to drag him out of the ring. Yeah. How yeah. does Sid not the biggest good guy ever from this? Because obviously what, Fla yeah. Flair capitalizes a hundred percent. Well, sure. But, but that's Flair's character. <laughs> right. Well, and anyone else would do the same. It's not like Hogan's been, uh, you know, super goody-goody his whole career either. But, like, this was the moment watching it where I was just like, well, that seems pretty, pretty crappy thing to do. Well, yeah, it makes me wonder if Vince was kind of like, okay, we're, we're going to turn your heel here. And then Hogan just kind of squashed it. I, I don't know. Because I don't know how you could play this off as him being a good guy here. Because he, he, he looked very, he I, looked slimy. I want to say, without... Because I remember watching like Superstars and Challenge or whatever you know the syndicated shows were at this time, and yeah. I feel like they played it up as Sid was supposed to be Hogan's friend, and he betrayed him there. Okay. To basically spin it to make Sid the bad guy. Sure. Which and then if I, I if I, was I wasn't buying as a twelve year old, <laughs> so. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so Flair ends up winning uh, to right. the surprise of everybody. And <laughs> I don't know. Like, were you like, did you realize somewhere midway through that Flair was going to be winning this thing? Or were you actually mm -hmm. surprised? Yeah, I was actually surprised. I didn't think that Flair, because I, I always kind of view Flair as a WCW guy. Yeah. I never really viewed him as someone that Vince really put much value in. But yeah. 
Yeah, I mean it's flair. Uh, you can't you can't deny sure. who he is. Yeah. <laughs> so he has a Cadillac in his pants, as he says. <laughs> he says many things for sure. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I just remember because I didn't get to watch this Rumble live. Um, I had to watch it after the fact, but watch like being like, oh, I wonder who's going to be the new champion and find out it was Ric Flair. I remember being blown away, but then they showed the clip of the end of it. And it was like, well, why would Hogan do that? Yeah. Yeah. It's just but yeah. It's weird. But overall, I really enjoyed this, uh, uh, Royal Rumble. It was good. The, uh, yeah, no, it was definitely a good rewatch. Um, I mean, I pretty much remember what happened in it. But to rewatch it with the intent to know that I'm going to be speaking about it, uh, yeah. you know, you pay a little more attention to stuff in some areas. But yeah, it's definitely because I believe when it was requested, they were saying like they think that's this is the best Royal Rumble. Um, yeah, that's what that's what the guy. Uh, and I Hanson would said. I would be hard <laughs> to argue against it, um, especially like because I'm pretty familiar with the time frame. Like that was crazy at the time. Sure. Um, and the pacing of it, I think, still holds up for it being two minutes. Now, I did like this year's where Brock just wrecked face for the first half of it because that was something yeah. I've not seen. I think uh, they dropped the ball there. I think they should have had uh, Brock just keep throwing people out. Just everyone? And then you, yeah, and then you could have had like, McIntyre come in and just <laughs> Claymore kick him out. I, I think That'd it would have been. Well, like Brock's exhausted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I could definitely see it going that way. Uh, they yeah. might have been worried that that much of Brock throwing people out, they would have lost the crowd. Sure. Because I could, because <laughs> that could get real ugly if that's your plan and you realize at number like fifteen. Oh, we people are hating this. <laughs> sure. So. Uh, but I just I like their commitment in the beginning of him just wrecking people um, so I, I like that for its differentness but uh, yeah this is definitely if it's not number one this has got to be top three I would say I'm sure there's Easily. people who love like the Attitude Era Austin Royal Rumbles but I didn't really care for those sure like not but on the same you, you really wasn't you said wasn't much of a stone cold guy right no because he just yeah. ended up winning. It was much what turned me against like Hogan or Cena. Where it's like, uh -huh. well, I don't understand. They just win. And <laughs> that was that. So sure. uh, let's see here. So yeah, but overall, like I'm glad to have watched this. So yeah. Thanks Are there, you... Moon Pants, for uh, suggesting that. Yeah, that was a good one. The uh, What I'd like to do at some point, or if someone has one that they think is really good, uh, war games uh -huh. not a non NWO non sting disappearing war games though <laughs> yes. some of those old ones because I need no. to go back and watch some of those and I might just watch them all because war games is awesome but uh, some of the older ones like I have I'm sure I have not seen some of the first ones so something I'd like to go back and watch so if anybody has a recommendation on one of those again I don't need anything to do with the NWO and the war games I saw all those uh, yes. yes. You don't need Sting. Uh, Being like, now you'll know that there's a fake Sting. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> all right. Do you want to move on to uh, video game stuff? Uh, yep. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna hit the bumper. Get over here! Time's up. Let's do this. All right. So. I have played a couple games this week, um, mm -hmm. mostly since I was off work for two days and kind of just sat there like, I don't know what to do. I feel well enough to sit up finally. Um, turned out, No Man's Sky, which I've been talking about for it feels like a month, finally went on sale. So I went ahead okay. and bought that and played it. Um, so you are under the impression that it is not a very good game due to things you've heard, correct? Yeah, just from the things I heard about right. it. So recent reviews are positive because they have done a lot of work to it, supposedly. Um, and hearing, like, some of the podcasts I listen to, they'll talk about playing it. You know, from time to time, they'll pick it up and just mess around in it. So I was real curious. So it's your basic survival-y exploration-style game. 
um, like basically you have a laser that you can point at be plant, animal, um, rock, and basically you can do like mining, resource gathering, you build stuff. Okay. Uh, you have a spaceship, so you can fly around the planet if you want to. Um, you can go into space. You can blow up asteroids to mine them for stuff like gold, silver, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I'm basically playing through like the questing, I guess you could call it, to get okay. familiar with the game. But you get to a point where you get like your uh, your hyperdrive, or you know, like you can go to other galaxies, basically. Uh, and then that's where you can actually just start going around exploring stuff and yeah, trying to find a, like a, is it online play? Uh, there are you can play with other people, but it's okay. you can do it single player and that's fine. Um, okay. Like there's hubs where you'll like be able to be around other people, I believe, from what I've seen. Like I assume there are other people. Names didn't pop up, but uh, let me see here. Yeah, there's online PvP or online co-op. So yeah, you can. Like, you got to get to where the other person is. But if okay. you're in, like, the same system or whatever, you can make that work. So, um, I haven't got... I've got about four hours into it right now. And uh, it's just kind of cool to just... You go to a planet, you can kind of do some exploration. You can build a base up if you want. And then you can just kind of fly around. You can go to other planets and just see what there is. So, it seems kind of cool so far. Um, I'll obviously okay. have to play it more to see if I can really get into it. Um, but it's been enjoyable. And then the other game, I told you a little bit about this. And I don't have a ton to say on it, but it's West of Dead and it's beta version currently. Yeah. This game is free. And it's one of like the, it popped up on Steam for me. Uh, release date was the 31st of March. And it's kind of like one of those rogue style games where you start out, you go into level, you start with your base weapons, you find upgrades, that kind of stuff as you go along. Um, I would assume you would want to play this with a controller because, excuse me, you have your movement and then you can aim a different way with like the other stick and try to shoot like things. Like you basically, you walk into a room, you clear the room, you get some, uh, some potential loot or uh, currency from the people yeah. that you killed. And then you move on to the next room. And, you know, it's just one of those style games that goes on. Uh, art style is a little bit like the cell shaded style. But your, yep. uh, your Ghost Rider Cowboy is what I've been calling it. Because you got, like, the skull that's on fire. Yeah. Uh, the guy who does the voicing for your character on the, the occasion that he talks sounds pretty much like what you would expect of, like, an Old West cowboy. Um, so... I might have played an hour or two of this thing total at this point. It okay. is a hundred percent real beta. At one point I talked to a merchant that I found in a room and then okay. I was traveling in the stars to where I thought it had somehow <laughs> launched, uh, uh, no man's sky. Cause mm -hmm. I was like, what is going on? I eventually somehow <laughs> got to refocus on my character, but I no longer had control of them. So gotcha. there's been a couple like graphical issues to work through and like that. Um, but again, I, I have paid nothing for it and it is a beta. Like it says it in the name West of dead beta. So sure. I'm not going to hold that against them at this point, but uh, <laughs> it seems fairly enjoyable. So there's that. Right. And then um, I'm some, up a picture uh... right now of soul juggler from Hearthstone. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to point out yeah. how stupid this card still is in Battlegrounds. Yeah. I had a game that basically I had no desire to be Demon, and it fell into me to where I could get a very early Soul Juggler from an upgrade. I took that. I had, on the next turn, I actually had two of them in the shop. So I have no okay. Demons. No Demons at this point. But I upgraded to a golden soul juggler. Yeah. With the intent to find some demons. I'm getting sure. stomped because, like, my my deck is garbage at this point. Or my uh, board. Yes. I find another soul juggler. So now I have a golden soul juggler and a regular one, and I finally find a demon. So that's my first demon to go with it. <laughs> yeah. Now I, I, I eke out a win. Next turn, 
there are two demons and another soul juggler. So I now have a golden soul juggler and two regular. And I finally have demons. So yes. I'm starting to win pretty good. A couple turns go by, you know, like I've gotten like better demons that like spawn demons when they die, all that kind of stuff. Well, I find another soul juggler. So now I have two golden soul jugglers yeah. and five demons. <laughs> okay. And just absolutely obliterated everyone at that point. Like oh, there's, sure. There's nothing they could do. <laughs> Um, and because they were the golden ones where they had the six attack, if somebody had the, the zappy boy sniper thingy, it uh-huh. doesn't hit the soul jugglers. So what happens is it kills something small. I throw out 12 damage from my soul jugglers and then it hits something else small. I throw another 12 damage. Um, I've also lost to this card in similar fashion, but I hate this card in Hearthstone right now in the battlegrounds. <laughs> yeah. Cause like if I have it, it's super good, but if I don't, it's super bad, but it just, I don't know. I feel like it either get rid of it or move it up a tier. Like maybe make it a four or a five, but no. holy moly, do I hate it? I haven't done any research to see the win rate of demons or this particular card. I don't know. I just know it feels really bad. Yeah. This, uh, this new season, uh, I cannot win. I mean, I can get up to the top four. Yeah. But I cannot get past. I mean, I, I can't win. I'm not won one game yet since this new uh, new seasons has started. Uh, um, because had to... it seems like every t- yeah. seems like every time I go with like I get committed. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do Murlocs. It seems like then everyone's gonna do Murlocs. Yeah. Or it gotta... seems like every th- anytime I, I choose something, everyone else is doing the same thing. So the, the pool for it is so limited. It's yeah, so, you, so frustrating. Like I basically I look for a power card, like a soul juggler, for example. Like if I get a soul mm-hmm. ju- juggler and it's early and I'm going mech, I will change course if I see remotely decent uh demons at all. Yeah. And just I'll change to whatever or I'll change to mechs. Um I usually don't change to dragon. Like that one you kinda gotta be committed kinda in the middle. But mm-hmm. now I went from, I was getting close to 6,000 uh, for my ranking. And while I was sick, I don't know if I just wasn't playing good or if I was like over committing to something and not being willing to make changes or, you know, I was clearly doing something wrong. I dropped down to like 4,500. So sure. um, <laughs> I have climbed back up uh, just a little bit over 5,000 right now. Uh, but I had kind of readjust. I was like, I'm playing for what I think will be cool as opposed to playing to win almost like, Oh, I want to be dragons. I'm going to be a dragon no matter what. And now it's like, well, whatever I find, that's what I'm going to do. Sure. Yeah. I, and I got definitely a bunch with uh, rat packs and that makes it pretty mm-hmm. easy as well. Yes. But so now you've played like a ton of just like the regular, like the ladder mode. Mm-hmm. So uh, what have you been seeing? I am tired of seeing Highlander, Mage, and Bomb Warrior. Uh, I haven't uh, ran into Bomb Warrior. Now, when I play uh, Ladder at this point in time, I'm just doing, like, Whizbang or the Cape. Like, whatever the okay. pre-made decks are that it gives me. But I've just yep. been doing that. Like, I haven't done enough research on Hearthpone or any of those to, you know, find a deck that I actually want to play. Yeah, I've been playing uh, Res- Resurrection Priest. Okay. Which which is all right, um, but if but if you're playing Highlander Mage, uh, they just they just will sheep you and they will mess up your rotation because then you'll just keep getting a bunch of sheep over and over again. Yeah, I'm kind of or, okay with that because I hate big priest or re- like sure I don't know it always infuriated me. But the one uh, the one um, style that I like is. Uh, shaman quest where you mm. get the uh, battle cry over yeah twice. uh i really like playing it but it's not that good <laughs> against uh highlander Ma- highlander major right um i will get a version of that with uh the whiz bang set up mm-hmm. and you can get some really cool stuff to happen but with that one i'm assuming that's like a real basic version and there's probably more you know more detailed good versions of it but it uh, it seems like it'll stomp somebody, or you just get wrecked by like turn five. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, but other than that, uh, I'm excited for the new uh, Demon Hunter class coming out on April 7th, I guess. Yeah, that'll be next week. I still... Outland? Yep. Yeah, they have... uh... Now, have you pre-bought, or are you just going to, like, use gold? Probably just use gold. I'm I'm not bought. Uh, I probably should. I uh, well, especially since I'm out of work right now, I'm not going to probably buy it. Well, yeah, that's fair. The uh, yeah. I usually I had been buying like the mega bundles usually uh, because I wanted all the bonus stuff with it, but this time I'm sitting at like nine thousand gold or something. Yeah. But the thing is, I'm I'm eyeing the forty nine dollar pack, um, because you get like you know it's the best deal you're going to get on the cards basically. Like the entire expansion, so it makes me want to buy it. But like, I definitely want the card back because it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm only missing one card back that I've been able to get. Um, obviously, there's like competitions and travel ones that I couldn't. But I like having all the card backs. Um, so I don't know. Like, I'm probably gonna pre do the small one. Part of me wants to do the big one because you get like the hero portrait and all the other stuff. But yeah. It that thirty dollars difference, especially with uncertainty currently, hard mm-hmm. to pull the trigger on. Sure. Although I do have fifteen dollars in Magic Blizzard money still, so that I forgot that I even had on my account. I just saw that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it looks like it should be fun. Now, uh, my wife has a conference call here oh. in like fifteen minutes. So, we so wrap before it. We, I before I have to leave, I would like to talk about uh, a certain company. Yes. <laughs> in the uh, uh, we're gonna yes. say it. it's GameStop. <laughs> yes. So we alluded to this. Um, no. So I think I think we spent like 15 minutes before I have to get off here, but uh. Yeah, that's. This. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. Okay. So the story I have up on the screen here, and we'll read this is, after instructing employees to wrap their hands in plastic bags and go back to work. GameStop shuts down Massachusetts stores. Yes. So, this whole whole time, there has been GameStop saying they're essential or not wanting to close down, and then it seemed like they closed some of the stores, but then they reopened them. Um, but holy moly, um, what is going on? Because GameStop has been in the news, like, not mainstream news, I don't think, but, like, if you're paying any attention to video game stuff you will just hear stuff about GameStop here and there and you're just like what are they doing over there um would you (laughs) yeah I mean I I don't know you you said that you worked there before right um I worked at it was an EB Games at the time I believe like it's been a lot it would have been like 2003 ish 2003 2004 somewhere in that time frame um I want to say it was an EB Games at the time, but I was there, like, my roommate was an assistant manager, so I was able to get, like, a part-time seasonal job. Uh, And I was there for uh, longer than that, but it wasn't that crazy when I worked there. Um, You know, you came in, uh, we had, like, a pretty cool store manager, I knew the assistant manager, the other guy that worked there was kind of cool. Don't go into the restroom after he's in there, uh, was the only thing I remember about that guy. (laughs) And uh, now, so I'm looking at, at one of these pictures here of uh, top ten or top fifteen things. Yeah, it, it shows like they actually stored the uh, in this at this one store. I, I'm assuming all of them don't do this. I hope they all of them do not do this. <laughs> store video restroom. games. <laughs> Did that happen in the store that you? Uh... Not that I remember. Okay. Like we had like a stock room. <laughs> And then we did have like the little restroom, but it was its own separate thing. So, okay. Okay. Now, again, this could be something to do with EB games at that time being separate from GameStop. And maybe that's what it was. Now you also got to figure when I was there in 2003, 2004, that timeframe, GameStop was doing okay. That was basically the place to go to buy a video game. Uh, You didn't have steam, like, you know, online stuff wasn't like it is now. So, yeah, you know, like I was there during the Halo 2 launch, basically. Okay. Uh, like that was like my time frame, I'm pretty sure. Um, but, uh, but I'm sorry. 
telling your employees to wrap your hands in plastic bags because you're too cheap to buy gloves. <laughs> right. Well, and it could be I'm that sorry. they they might not have been able to get gloves because they're going to medical places. So maybe they couldn't. Um, That's fine. I'm they not saying that that makes down. it. Like, I'm just trying to come up with some explanation that someone thought this was okay. Um, but yeah, like basically, I mean, if you've gone to a GameStop to buy something, it's like, would you like to pre-purchase this? Would you like to sign up for this? Would you like yeah. to sign up for that? Wait, I can't just take your money yet. I have to ask you about these things. Um, <laughs> yes. Would you like to buy a Funko Pop? Yeah. Like, there's all this stuff, and it just seems dreadful, like, going there. Because we had, like, the, hey, do you want to sign up for this? Oh, okay. And, like, we were pretty calm about stuff. But um, the only thing that I had experience-wise that was crazy is... Uh, so the store manager we had moved to one of the other stores and I believe this was after GameStop information came that they were bought um, I'd have to look back to know the exact time frame and I don't feel like doing it and we're a little bit crunched um, but we got this new manager in who came from like some other game place and he took over the store and no one liked him but I kind of got along with him uh, which is yeah. you know like that seems to be how I am in life is I can make things work with people, but he was yes. insane. He wanted to rearrange the store. So you have like all the different sections like Xbox, uh, PlayStation, you know, like he yeah. wanted to rearrange the store by UPC code because it would be easier for inventory. And he said that the place that he worked previously, which happened to go out of business, that's how they did it. And it was great. And I was like, what? I was like, you mean like, so put the Xbox section, like instead of alphabetical, do it by yeah. UPC code. He's like, well, yeah, but you would do that for everything altogether. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, at like, what do you mean? And like his vision was you'd have Game Boy games, Nintendo games, Xbox, play. they'd just be all over the place, but they'd be in numerical order. <laughs> so it'd be easy for us no. to find them. And I was like, I, doesn't I can... that make every person have to ask you where something is? Yeah. Now, I, I can see that working for, like, the different sections. Like, the Xbox section has their own number codes or... Hey, I can't or... find uh, Aardvark Adventures. Where's it? Shouldn't it be right here at the beginning? Oh, no, it's uh, actually <laughs> uh, the 47th one over. Next to Xylophone Raiders. No. When you look for... Like, you're going to look alphabetical. <laughs> That'd be like, be like, you know, all these games that start with the... They should probably all be in the same row because they all start yeah. with TH. No. Yes. You, you don't do that. <laughs> like, if you were going to, you would think you would limit it to the, you know, keep your PlayStation section and then do this. I quit um, shortly <laughs> after. Sure. In a hilarious conversation where he's like, well, we'd like to keep you. You've been here for way longer than the seasonal, and I can definitely keep you around. Would you like to stay? I was like, dude... There's no way you were, you were insane. So that was my, like, that was my one uh. crazy, but that was just, that dude was a maniac. Um, so next time you go to a, any store though, that has a bunch of stuff set up, um, just kind of look and imagine it being arranged by barcode number <laughs> and not yes. anything else. Like the chaos that that would be <laughs> to where it just makes it easier for the for the workers and not for the actual well and it wouldn't really stuff. because can you imagine looking at a wall with like four different size things and just all kinds of order and then you can't just like look at the wall and put it back in alphabetical order you would have to be doing like oh this game what's the number on it and you're looking at like a 16 digit <laughs> number yeah to a like holy moly like <laughs> I mean, he brought it up. Like, it wasn't like he was messing with me. Like, having spoken yeah. with everyone else, he brought it up in seriousness with everybody. Like, dude, if we had, like, 20 games, that'd be okay. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, so some other horrible things that uh, GameStop has done, other than, you know, like, the standard stuff of trying to sell you stuff, they try to get you to, uh, you know, they'll give you zero money for anything. Uh, this one I didn't know about. Uh the old Xenoblade Chronicle thing, 
Basically, no. there was... Uh, now, this is going from the gamer.com is where I'm pulling this stuff from. I haven't researched it, so I'm taking what they have done as journalism here is accurate, but yeah. I don't disbelieve it at all. Uh, basically, there was a character that was going to be in the Smash Brothers game, and it kind of drug, drummed up some business for this game. Uh, but it was a GameStop exclusive game. So what they did was a memo went out to the stores that they were to take all the new copies, which they were selling for fifty nine ninety nine, open mm-hmm. them up, take them out, and consider them a used game. And because with the used game, they could kind of price it on whatever based on rarity and that kind of stuff to jack the price up to eighty nine ninety nine a piece, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> That's so all I can say. <laughs> right. There's all kinds of other stuff about like pre-order and that kind of stuff, which is its own, you know, pre-order bonuses and stuff, I think is its own conversation. So GameStop's just kind of going along with everybody else on that one. Um, yeah. But the other was, uh, uh, Deus Ex or Deuce Ex or whatever you want to call it, Human Revolution, they had made uh, deals where you'd get, basically, like, if you bought the physical copy, you get a download code for a free copy of the game inside the physical version. Apparently, yeah. GameStop didn't like this. I kind of remember hearing about this, but not that they were working on their own online platform, is what the story here says. But to combat yeah. this, they made employees open all copies of the game and take out the code and get rid of it. <laughs> like wow um, uh yeah <laughs> so those, like look at this there's a list of like 25 things and uh yeah you know, like one of the things this the thing lists is like they got hacked and people's information got lost that's not something that's not GameStop exclusive so yeah but yeah they just you know like they'll give you it's like a whole video game collection and they'll give you seven dollars or something um when i was at the eb games uh, and shortly after the merger thing or whatever was going on with it um there would be specials where you could get some good deals on the trade-ins but yeah like sports games you were never going to get anything because they were out of date yeah. but yeah it's always yeah. bad so oh i mean yeah a couple times i took games there i think i i, I took I, I took games there like twice and the second time I think it's like, I want to say like five games. And the guy's like, yeah, I'll give you like, I don't know, like 10 bucks for all these. <laughs> and, I mean, and they were like really old. They were probably maybe like six months old or whatever. Right. And I was like, these are somewhat new. He's like, I'm like, you have some of these up on your bank right now. Yeah, but they're they're uh, they're kind of old, man. I'm just going to be honest with you. Well, 10 You're bucks. Like, well, when we sell it used, we sell it for $10 cheaper than brand new. That's why we give you three bucks. <laughs> I'm, and I'm like. So, yeah, I mean, he pissed me off. So I'm like, okay, now I'm done. <laughs> I just walked out. Yeah. Now there were, uh, like during my time, like there was something where it was like, it was just a terrible deal. Um, now we also, we would be able to pay attention cause you know, we worked there. You'd get mm-hmm. like games on sale for like nine 99 down at target and <laughs> be like, Oh, we get $15 trade in. So you'd go, you know, if you had a game, you go buy those, you're making $5 on each one of them. Sure. The, uh, one of the other things that was because you asked me about this was where they had like some of the stock stored in the restroom, like around the toilet. Uh, we did not do that at the store I was working at. Again, that could be limited yeah. to uh, GameStop and not EB or whatever. But uh, I just thought like that was something I would make. Like I never saw that, but I'm sure okay. it happens. Like no chance. Well, that, like uh, I, I hope that it was just one store that going rogue. Right. Well, or they ran out of room and they had to put it somewhere and it's like well we got shelves in here um, sure where it's not like the most ideal but yeah now yeah. the one nice thing about working there is we had like the shrink wrap machine so if you bought something yeah. at a store that you ended up wanting to return it but you had opened it and it turned out that it sucked or something like we could shrink wrap stuff that was awesome gotcha. so you could buy like a CD well, copy it but all right well, I gotta go. Okay. Um, you can get, you can keep doing the podcast if you want. <laughs> yes, I'm but, going to uh, tell everyone a story. I want to spend another hour solve reading this book I bought. <laughs> yeah, be like, I've always wanted to get into audiobooks. So, all right. Well, I will let yeah. you run. I will uh, wrap everything up. And all right. Then... Well, you guys have a great week. All right. Later, Saul.
See you. All right. So yeah, so he had to run, but obviously we don't really have anything further to go, like show-wise. So we will be wrapping this up here uh, pretty quick. Let's see. I think we hit everything we wanted to. Um, so yeah, so if you're still listening, we got the website uh, you can go to. It's agonyofpositivity.com. Uh, there's a player there. There's a way you can submit like email message or something for the show. Uh, we got the at the AOP podcast for Twitter, the AOP podcast at gmail.com. Um, feel free to search for agony of positivity on the Apple store and do the five star review, all that garbage. Um, we got the YouTube channel where we put this up like the video forum. You're not really missing much. If you're just listening to the normal podcast, it's basically my browser and me in the corner uh, showing you pictures, but we try to explain everything pretty well. Um, yeah, there you go. So we're going to end it and hope you guys have a good week. We'll be back next week, I would imagine, and we will see what on earth happened with WrestleMania. Uh, live life like a goose. Yes. Mm -hmm.